can we remember how to do this? Uh, there's a few questions there. Let's start at the top. Uh, identify the dependent and independent variables. Okay, think about that again. What do dependent and independent mean in this context? Yeah, Renee. Very good. Like, that's what dependent means. Yeah, that's right. So cost is the one that depends on time. You spend more time, you'll have to pay more money. Yeah, does that make sense? So therefore, I'm going to label this as dependent and independent. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Find the cost for the plumber for four and a half hours. So where am I going to go? Where am I going to look on this graph? Use some language. Think about it. We have language for this. I've got two axes. Which one am I interested in? I'm interested in... Now, interestingly, I mean, we do tend to call these the X and the Y. But they're not X and Y here, are they? They're actually... Late. Yeah, it's the time axis, right? So this horizontal time axis here, there's four and a half right there. You can see it between four and five. So if I draw my line up, that looks like where I'm going to. What do you think that looks like on the cost axis? Yeah, good. It's clearly above 400, but less than 450. So I think 425 is pretty good. So for part B, um, one of the things you can write as well is that like we don't actually know precisely. So I'm going to put a squiggly sign there, which means approximate. Uh, 425, I think, is what we said. Right? That looks pretty good to me. Okay. Part C. Find, let me uncover it. Find the number of hours worked if the charge is $250. So now where am I looking? Which axis? Yeah, the, the cost axis, the vertical one. Now we do tend to call Y, we usually label that, but it's not the Y axis here. So we want to use the right language for the right question. 250, where's that? That's here. Okay, so again, I'm going to read across, right? So it looks to me like that that really conveniently is going to go right onto this nice neat number here. That's a bit of a coincidence. There's lots of numbers, lots of spots that don't, but that's okay. Uh, part C, um, reading off the time, how many hours? Two and a half. Two and a half. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. Now, here's where it starts to get trickier and we need to make a bit more of a choice. We're trying to find the gradient now. Okay. Now, when you have a look at this, mm, Again, you've got to be careful. You want to choose the furthest points apart possible. Do you remember last lesson why we talked about further apart is better? Why did we do that? Yeah, very good. Like if I choose, for example, these two points here, right? You can see for this one, we had to estimate. And if I went right next to it for this one, we would also have to estimate. Now, if our estimate's good, then no problems. But if our estimate's off just a little bit, our whole gradient will be out of whack, okay? So in fact, this time, I'm going to choose a couple of values that are going to make a later question easier and they're harder to read, but we'll still get an accurate result. I want to go right for the very end and for the very beginning, okay? Because they're the furthest possible points I can choose. So I should be reasonably accurate. So I'm going to go for this. And you might want to write this down with me that it's rise over run so you remember which numbers go where on the numerator. Okay. If I go for the furthest number, how high is that? Vertically. Have a look. Looks like 700, right? Because here's 600 and it goes two more. Is that okay? So 700, I'm going to take away where I started from. Okay, you have a look. What do you reckon? Hmm. Now, it does look like there's the 50 line. It looks like it's just gone under that. I'm going to say 40. I, I know that's probably not going to be exact, but it'll be close enough. And over the size of the whole graph, I think I'll still be reasonably accurate. Now I divide. Okay, the run. Here's one of the convenient things about choosing this as zero, right? I'm going to take away zero. That's an easy number. I don't have to like try and estimate that. It's exactly zero. Where am I going to end? When would you call the ending? Mm. So yeah, I've got I've got seven here. I've got eight here, so it's between seven and a half and eight. I think seven and seven point seven five, seven three quarters. That's pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to write 7.75 Okay, now our calculator will make mincemeat of this, right? It's going to give us some weirdo decimal. What are we going to get off of this? Can someone get a number for me? And give me some decimal places too. Yeah. Okay. Now, I think we can see, as we've seen before, right? 
Um, that 0 0.16 hanging off the end, that's like the little error that we introduced just because of how we're measuring. I'd be pretty happy to say that's going to be 85. Now, I've done the first half of the question, but look again at what it's asking us. What do we actually want? It says find the gradient. What is its meaning in this context? What would you say? Yeah, Renee. Uh, the cost per hour. Yeah, so what's happening is um, rise over run means how much are you rising? How much is cost going up every time you run one unit? That's one hour, right? So that's how many dollars each hour each hour costs about $85. So I'm going to say that's $85 per hour. Okay? That's how much this plumber is actually charging us and how we interpret the gradient. Okay? Now the handy thing about doing gradient that way is when you have a look at part E, I don't know if you can make it up, um, we've already answered this question. It says, find the intercept on the vertical axis, right? This one. What is that number? We already read it off. It's 40, right? Here's that number right there. We used it in the previous part. That's the vertical intercept. But what does it mean? The gradient is cost per hour. What's the vertical intercept mean? It means, yeah, before, before he has done anything, like he's been there for 0 0.1 seconds or something, and you've already been charged 40 bucks. We have a name for this um, if you have a serviceman come out. We call it a call out charge, right? It's like before I've touched anything, you've called me out. It's taken me time to drive there. I could be doing another job right now. So you owe me some money. So I would call that, this is part A, a $40 call out charge. Can anyone else think of any other context where it's like before you spend any time doing it, they just hit you with a charge straight away, like the second that you start off? Any suggestions? Any other area in life we want to, you said again? Yeah, taxis. Uh, now with taxis, and this is actually worth writing down, maybe in a different color because it doesn't refer to this question. But in taxis, this has a special name. It's called, and I want you to write it down so that you recognize it. It's called flagfall. Um, who's heard the phrase flagfall before? Yeah, good. Um, this is where the phrase, hey, can you flag a taxi, comes from, right? Now, I don't know. I went and looked this up because I was curious. You guys know I'm always curious about names. I always thought, oh, you're flagging a taxi. Because how do you physically flag a taxi? You wave your arm, right? Kind of like a flag. That's what I thought it meant. But I researched it, and actually it's a different answer. Let me show you what is sitting inside a taxi. Okay, I don't know if you can make that out. Let me get the lights. Okay, have a look at that. Use your, um, use your investigative skills. What is this thing? It's a, yeah, it's a taxi meter. It's, it's working out how much they're charging you, right? Uh, in fact, if you squint, you can kind of see down the bottom here, right? There is um, how many trips this person has done, and these kinds of numbers, they're ticking over. The further you drive, the longer you sit in traffic, they're charging you more and more. Let me come back. Look at this big, like the whole thing, right? See this thing up here? This is the flag that Flagfall is named after, right? So there's a taxi, it's driving along, and you can see that, it's actually usually lit up, right? And this, this is sitting right in the front of the taxi, so you can see at a glance, if you're standing on the side of the road, hey, there's no one in that taxi, even if it's dark, I can see. So I'm gonna get that taxi. You get in, and what do you think the taxi driver does? They, they don't want anyone to think that the taxi's vacant. So they take this, and they push it down, and the flag, it, it falls, which is why it's called flagfall. Okay? Now, that idea and that word has been carried on into, I mean, now not so much, but back in the day when like calls were individually charged and a lot more expensive, they'd say the second you connect to someone, they charge you flagfall. That's nothing to do with flags. It has everything to do with this. Um, but even so, this is a very old-fashioned one, as you can probably tell. They don't do this anymore. Um, they've got, got fancy electronic ones that just connect straight to the odometer. But anyway, that's where it comes from. And that, that phrase, flagfall, um, you'll see it in questions. They'll say, calculate the flagfall and blah, blah, blah. And they're looking for you to work out what that intercept is. That's where it starts charging you. Okay. 